Phil has been helping families in the Lowcountry area plan for a successful retirement. Phil at Revolutionary Financial Group will help you learn about strategies for creating income in retirement, managing your wealth, and minimizing taxes. Welcome to the Low Country Money Talk with Phil Bloyd. Welcome to Low Country Money Talk. I am Jen Rizak, and today joining me, Phil Bloyd with Revolutionary Financial Group. And today we're covering a topic that affects us all, our country's growing debt and how Congress is handling the matter. This has become an almost annual drama on Capitol Hill, and today we'll be talking about the problems we'll potentially face if our country's debt is allowed to continue to grow at this pace. Later, we'll tackle some of your biggest retirement questions. So we have a lot to cover today, and Phil, Glad to be with you today. I hope Glad you're doing to be great. Here, Jen, doing great. I hope you are bracing yourself for this topic oh, because sure. it's a big one. <laughs> a long time coming. Yeah, certainly yeah. is. So set the scene here for mm -hmm. us. Talk a little bit about the scope of our national debt sure. situation. So 32 trillion, that's what we hear mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's much deeper because you have the unfunded liabilities, the obligations of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all these type things. So really, it's a lot more than 32 trillion. And I mean, now if if a bill's passed, it's like okay, this bill is, you know, 1.5 trillion. Is we've gotten away from well, this is 100 billion, or I don't even think they do bills for a million, 100 <laughs> yeah. million anymore. So it's really becoming something huge. And there, it seems like there's really no stopping Congress. Mm -hmm. Both sides, they just love to spend our money. Right. Right. Yeah. And I don't think we want Congress or anybody else to know what comes after a trillion, because once they find out what that number is called, they'll spend it, right? <laughs> sure. It's just, you know, it, it, it has, we have two choices, right? So we have to either reduce spending, mm -hmm. okay, or we have to raise taxes, raise right. revenue, right? If we're running a business, right? right. And that's kind of what it is. I don't really see the taste to do either. Mm -hmm. So... We have stuffed all of our funds into these deferred accounts, I call them. Other people may call them, you know, the IRAs, the 401ks. We never really got tax savings on these accounts. They're, they're deferred. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, what I'll ask people is like, tell me what deferred means. And they're like, well, that means later. Yeah, I'll just pay it later. Sure. Yeah. And I'm like, when's later? <laughs> well, if you're retired... And you're over 73 or you're 73 or older, it's now mm -hmm. because you're mandated to start to start taking out of these funds. Right. So what happens when taxes go up? Who determines how much of these funds you get to keep or you get to pay? Yeah. That's a little scary when we're looking at all this debt and all of our money is locked up in these deferred accounts and someone else other than us will decide right. how much of that money they want and they have a spending addiction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a problem. That is a problem. And so you see why people get so concerned because we have all this debt that just keeps growing and growing and growing. There are going to be politicians and people in Congress who are looking for solutions. And unfortunately for the taxpayers, turning to us might, might be the solution for people who are worried about that especially as it relates to what they save for retirement and, and maybe some adjustments they can make. How are you talking to people about that right now? Well, you also, we have to add in that inflation because it's a tax of its own, right? So our retirees are extremely um, stressed now about spending because one, everything costs more, meaning I have to take more out of my deferred accounts, right. which means I pay more in taxes to get the money. Uh, I pay more for gasoline, all these things. And when I take more out of these deferred accounts, of course, it's going to raise my tax rate. So I pay more for things. I pay more for food. I pay more for all these other things. But when I take that money out of an IRA, when I'll ask a person, they're like, well, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to give $10,000 to my kid. And I'm like, okay, I'll withdraw uh, 12500 They're like, no, Phil, what are you, goofy? <laughs> I said ten. And I said, yeah, but you're going to give Uncle Sam the other 2500 Right. And then they're like, well, maybe my kid doesn't need that money. And I'm like, maybe I'll agree with you on that, okay? Because we don't know how much we're going to need to take care of you because you may live another 20 years into retirement. All right. So that sounds like a really important thing to be thinking about. Um, when you look at those account balances that you have, 
recognizing that doesn't equate to your retirement budget. When we talk about the situation of national debt and taxation, right. we might have $800,000 saved up, but that doesn't mean we get to spend that. It's not your money. Right, you know? right. IRS, so we take the R, uh, the IA, the IRA and replace the A with an S. <laughs> and then, you know, so you have a partner here. Right. So we like to also throw out some strategies because we want to take those lemons and create some lemonade. So we talk about, uh, hey, maybe we want to lock some of those taxes in now mm -hmm. by converting some of those IRAs, pay the taxes on them now, move them into a Roth IRA. So in the future, we don't have to pay taxes because we already locked them in. So we want to talk about that. Going back just a little bit to the pressures of retirees these days, the other problem they're going to have is, guess what? The stock market was way down last year. Mm -hmm. So I believe the S&P was just under 20% down. The NASDAQ was up 35 or down 35%. So we had a recovery this year. So everybody's, oh, yeah, hey, you know, the good days are back. Well, maybe not so, but if, if, a, if a, a stock index goes down 35%, it takes a lot more than 35% to get it back to where it was. Inflation, reduction in your value of your stocks and taxes, they all hammered our retirees last year. Wow. So so let's just recap really quick. You're talking about pressures of inflation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about out of control government spending that's causing people to be concerned about tax increases in the future. We're talking stock market volatility. Yeah. Uh, there's an awful lot of challenges that retirees are up against. We haven't yeah. even talked about things like health care costs oh, and long-term yeah. care. I mean, sure. this is why, Phil, people need some guidance when they're putting right. together a retirement plan. A lot to it. Yeah. You know? And so before we start giving our funds away, we, we better make sure that we have a plan to make sure that we have our long-term care covered and these other things that we're going to need. Right. So so when you put together plans for people, you cover all these different areas, sure. not just our income, but also thinking about taxes, health care, mm -hmm. uh, really a, a lot mm -hmm. that goes into this process. Sure. So when we look at it, Jen, I've been doing this for 32 years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a book coming out we'll talk about maybe, uh, but uh, I've retired 100 times. Okay, so that's the title of the book. The thing being is I've helped so many people in retirement, I feel like I've retired 100 times. Right. So I know the beginning from the end, and you may only retire once, but I've already seen kind of how it goes. So I put that in all of our plans. Yeah, that's the ideal that we all only retire once, right? Yes. Well, again, so many challenges there. Skyrocketing inflation, market volatility, and our nation's debt. Those are just a few of the reasons why people are worried about their financial security. Now, if this includes you, now is the time to review your retirement plan. Here's how you can contact Phil and the team at Revolutionary Financial Group. Stay tuned, we'll be back. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense in retirement? No one can avoid taxes completely, but with the right strategies in place, you could potentially reduce your taxes in retirement. With a plan to protect your retirement savings from higher taxes, that's just more of your hard-earned money back in your pocket. And at Revolutionary Financial Group, helping people like you minimize your taxes in retirement is what we do. Call today to book your free 15-minute consultation. Saving is a really good start when it comes to retirement, but you have to do more than just save. You have to think about income in retirement. When it comes to your retirement, do you really want to pay bills with guaranteed income or just maybe income? Hi, I'm Phil Bloyd with Revolutionary Financial Group. Our team creates comprehensive plans for maximizing income and minimizing taxes for families right here in the Low Country. Call today to book your free 15 minute consultation. Thanks for joining us today. I am here with Phil Bloyd. He is the founder of Revolutionary Financial Group. And today we're talking about the national debt situation here in the U.S. And really, it sounds like the only options, Phil, for getting our national debt under control are cutting spending and raising taxes. So let's start with cutting spending. What, what could that potentially look like? Well, uh, I don't think there's much of an appetite in Congress <laughs> to cut anything because right. votes, right? Mm -hmm. um, we always see, you know, what are I always ask people, and I don't want to be negative against politicians, but you know, most people don't like them. So the idea would be, uh, what are politicians good at? You know, and a lot of people say, well, nothing. And I won't tell you the other things they talk about. 
But, you know, when you're in the House of Representatives, it's only a two-year term. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get in there, you get seated, you get the lay of the land, you're already working on your next election campaign. So if I go in there and say, I always tell people this at, at seminars, let's say that we're running for office and you're already in office and I want your job. I'm going to say, well, hey, that Jen, she voted to raise your taxes. You know, and people are like, whoa, you know. So what Congress did years ago, they came up with this sunset clause on these tax codes. Right. So the current tax code that we're in, it sunsets after 2025, and then it goes right back to where it was. That way, if I get in there and say, oh, Jen, raise your income taxes, you could say, I didn't vote to raise anything. Right. But yet those taxes went up anyway, just because of the sunset clause. Right. So um, the appetite for reducing Social Security, everybody loves their Social Security. Hey, they took that out of my paycheck. I earned that. You know, that's my money. Uh, so that's one thing. Now, when they started Social Security, they weren't planning on people retiring, you know, at 55 or and start taking Social Security at 62 and live to like 89 or 90 either. Right. So there's a lot of stress on Social Security. But if you talk about reforming Social Security, you're probably not going to get reelected. Okay. Uh, Medicare, everybody loves Medicare. I'm waiting to get my 65th birthday and then I get that Medicare, right? So we're going to cut that very unpopular. So if, if there's any programs to be cut, you're always going to have people that come against you. So mm -hmm. I don't really see much of an attitude to cut anything. Okay. There was a little bit of cut they tried to do in that last bill. And I mean, you talk about fighting and scratching and all this stuff, you know, the discretion areas where they could cut some things, but they don't seem to have that appetite to cut there either. Yeah. So I don't know about cutting. And as far as, uh, Raising taxes, heck, only 50% of the people in this country pay income taxes anyway. Wow. So are we going to squeeze the, the, you know, the top percentage of people in the 10%, top 10%, they pay most of the taxes anyway. So we're going to squeeze more from them? You know, I read something recently that said that if we uh, confiscated every billionaire's wealth, all of it, it would only be about $4 trillion or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the government last year, I think, spent $6.5 trillion. Wow. Bucks. So that's really not going to get anywhere. So, you know, people are against raising taxes. Again, it's not very popular. Uh, you always say, well, we're going to tax the rich people. I say, give me a definition of rich. Right. Because I grew up in Kentucky. So a rich person could be the person that has skirting around their trailer house. You know, it's like, <laughs> what's your definition right. of rich? So they try to say $400,000. I mean, I don't know. Right. But then there's income taxes. Some people don't work anymore. They don't make income. So what taxes are they going to pay? Capital gains taxes? I don't know. So I just don't see it on that side. It's going to be very rough either way. Yeah. But what's really hurting us now is if you talk, you see the interest rates on government debt. You know, they're paying, what, 4% on one-year treasury, 5% on some one-year treasuries. Um, so what's going to happen, there's four things that really make up a lot of our debt, and that's Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and the interest on the debt. And the interest on the debt is about doubling. It's going to be over a trillion dollars a year pretty soon, just the interest on the debt. The <laughs> government really? brings in more money than they've ever brought in before. They bring in over $4 trillion a year, but yet they spend a trillion more Last year, they spent over $2 trillion more. Wow. So it's like, no matter how much they bring in, they're addicted to the spending. And yeah. that's the problem. Right. <laughs> and a lot of people agree with that sentiment that there is so much government spending, it's out of control, some people would say. So the question for a lot of people is, can I be proactive here? What can I do, especially yeah. for people getting ready to retire? What can I do to preserve sure. my retirement savings? What are some steps that we could potentially right. take? Well, the first thing, Jen, I think we should do, let's look at us. Yeah. Because they're going to do what they do. Let's look at us and see what we can do, what behaviors we can change. Because most of my clients are conservative people financially. So they don't spend a lot. They're like, you know, they're, they're way out of touch with what the government's doing. So my thoughts are almost every person I meet, one, they're, they're paying more in taxes than they should. Mm 
-hmm. And a lot of this could be because where they're taking their income. Uh, one thing we do is we show people buckets. So we put, we have three buckets. One bucket is a capital gains bucket. Yep. Okay, so we're taxed at the capital gains tax rate. Uh, most people federally, that's about 15%. So I tell people, you know, when I was a, a preteen growing up uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, I had a cousin that had a farm in Southern Indiana. And uh, we used to have some chores we had to do every night, but we would be out playing, swinging on uh, vine ropes in the, the river and, and fishing and doing all this stuff. Well, when it got about dinner time, we would start making our way back. We had to water some of these critters, okay? So in those days, we had these buckets, and you know they weren't galvanized, so they would rust and they would get holes <laughs> in these buckets, right? So we would have to go to the hydrant, turn it on, wait for the water to come, and then finally the water would come up, we would fill up the buckets. And so what I would do is I would get ahead of my two cousins, and I would get the best bucket. So the best bucket had, guess what? No holes. No holes. Right. <laughs> right. So I figured early on I could make fewer trips mm -hmm. with a bucket that had no holes. And these guys, they would have the bucket with holes. So they'd have to make more trips. So as you can see, I could get to the dinner table there sooner. There you go. <laughs> right? So, um, you know, they never cut on to that. I don't know quite why. <laughs> but it's the same with our finances. Depending on which bucket we choose, it's going to have a hole maybe. Mm -hmm. And that hole is going to leak out taxes. And that capital gains tax bucket is going to be about 15%. And the income tax, it could go up to 37%. And in the tax-free bucket, the Roth IRA bucket, it has no holes in it. That's yeah. my bucket. So to save in taxes, I want to get you from the buckets with a hole to the one with no hole. But also, you may be taking your, your income out of the wrong bucket now. And that could be where we could save some tax. Yeah, yeah. Certainly just want to be efficient. I yes. think you were learning some yeah. lessons in efficiency <laughs> right. early on there. Yeah. Important insights, Phil. Yeah. We appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh -huh. And coming up next, Phil's going to answer some of your biggest questions about things like Social Security and taxes. So stay with us. Low Country Money Talk continues right after this. Hi, I'm Phil Boyd with Revolutionary Financial Group. Over the last 32 years in the financial industry, I've seen about everything. There's so much I'd like to share with you about the benefits of solid planning and the pitfalls that can derail your retirement. I'd love to send you a copy of my book. I've retired hundreds of times. You'll learn more about tax and income planning and more. Remember, at Revolutionary Financial Group, there's more to your retirement than just your money. Saving is a really good start when it comes to retirement, but you have to do more than just save. You have to think about income in retirement. When it comes to your retirement, do you really want to pay bills with guaranteed income or just maybe income? Hi, I'm Phil Bloyd with Revolutionary Financial Group. Our team creates comprehensive plans for maximizing income and minimizing taxes for families right here in the Low Country. Call today to book your free 15 minute consultation. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense in retirement? No one can avoid taxes completely, but with the right strategies in place, you could potentially reduce your taxes in retirement. With a plan to protect your retirement savings from higher taxes, that's just more of your hard-earned money back in your pocket. And at Revolutionary Financial Group, helping people like you minimize your taxes in retirement is what we do. Call us today to learn ways to possibly lower your taxes in the future. Thanks for joining us today. And now it's time to get to some of the questions that you all have for Phil Bloyd of Revolutionary Financial Group. And Phil, I know you always look forward to this part of the show. Sure. Are you ready to answer some Absolutely. of our viewer questions? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Our first question today is from Carl in Sun City, who says, the idea of a big market drop really makes me uncomfortable now that I'm within a few years of retirement. I'm also worried about taxes how should I start repositioning my assets? Wow. It, big question. it makes me uncomfortable too. <laughs> Nobody likes a big uh, drop. I think I've been through in the 32 years about five really big bear markets. So, uh, of course, the closer we get to retirement, the less aggressive we typically want to be. Uh, the problem sometimes, depending on where the funds are invested currently, 
they have limited choices maybe in their 401k and it's really tough. But we want to go the, the less aggressive. Nowadays, they have these, you know, retire 2025, this and that. But I still don't like those a lot because you don't really know what that's investing in. So uh, if I would say to Carl, one, we want to kind of be less aggressive because we can't take that big market drop in, in the recovery based upon age. But two, uh, nowadays, depending on Carl's age, he may have an opportunity to go ahead and roll over to an IRA now, even though he's still contributing. And maybe we can start working with those funds and get those ready for retirement where we have more choices in an IRA than what he would have in his 401k. That's one thing. The, the other thing we want to look at is maybe we have some opportunity to do some Roth conversions, pay our taxes now before the sunset clause in the current tax code after uh, year 2025, if there's no action on Congress. And some people say Congress does good at nothing. So <laughs> the taxes will go back to where they were. So we, want, we may want to look at some Roth conversions in that time period. So that's okay. what I would say. All right, great mm -hmm. question there. And sure. always good to get that kind of second yeah, opinion before sure. you make a decision. Absolutely. All right, we have a question from Andrea and Bluffton who asks, what's your best advice for someone who is 10 years away from retirement and doesn't want to make any big financial mistakes? I don't think any of us want to make big financial mistakes. Yeah, they're not fun. No. And they cost you money. That's what they call financial yeah. mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Well, 10 years out. Okay, so a lot could happen in 10 years. Uh, maybe we're getting to the end of this bear market, so you maybe have a, a really good bull market ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So that's some things. That, again, I would go back and say, uh, depending on her age, I don't know what that is. I don't know what plan she's in at work. But if we have some opportunity to maybe move that into some managed money accounts so we can actually track it and watch it and, you know, kind of, uh, I always like the rule of 100. The rule of 100 says you take your age, you subtract it from 100, and then that's the only amount that you want to have uh, market in stocks or these right. type things. So I would look at some of those things. Uh, also look at what her income needs are going to be in retirement and see how she matches up with her savings today. So right. I need a little bit more information, but that's a starter. All right. Good, good insights there to, mm -hmm. to get started. Here's a question from Kent in Sun City who says, we've been working with someone, but we aren't sure if we're getting the right guidance to help protect from market risk, taxes, inflation, all those issues. So what should we do? Well, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing, I, it's always good to get another opinion. Right. Look look at things a little differently. Um, if you don't like the way things are going, a lot of times it could be your financial advisor. That's kind of his, uh, the way that he does things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe you're noticing more because you're closer to retirement and you're like, eh, I don't know if I like this. I have people a lot of times will come to me and they're like, well, Phil, uh, my advisor said he could do what you recommended. And I'm like, well, okay, why hasn't he then? Right. Because it's right. not in his design. So he's going to drift away from that when you're not pressuring him. So what you need to do is you need to find a financial advisor, you know, that one listens to you. Uh, we, we recommend you both come to see us mm -hmm. because we have this big macho thing where the guy, oh, I'm taking care. I'm like, OK, so you're going to die first. Right. <laughs> and then exactly. you're kind of leaving your wife out here where she's not following things. And that's a bad place to be. Right. So we want her to be part of the plan. So we want you to come in. I like to look at your tax return. OK, it tells me a lot of things about you. A lot of people say, well, my other financial advisor, he never asked for my tax return. Hmm. Well, the problem then you go, you pay too much in taxes. So you gripe at your CPA. Mm -hmm. Your CPA says, well, it's not me. It's that financial person you got over there because the things that you're doing, it's affecting your taxes, capital gains, IRA withdrawals, whatever, right? So uh, then you go back to your investment advisor, your financial advisor, and they're like, well, it's not me. I mean, I don't do tax stuff, whatever. Right. But whatever you're doing with your finances will affect your tax return. So, of course, we want to look at that. So I'll tell you to bring me that a statement. Well, here I got a big spreadsheet with all my stuff on it. And I'm like, well, that's great. I'm, I see you have a hobby with your <laughs> spreadsheets. But there's a statement that you get right. from your uh, custodian. That's what I want to see because it'll show me your gains, your losses, 
uh, what you started with, where you're currently at, so I can count in, like, if we change this, what will the capital gains tax? And then I'll refer back to your tax return and say, well, you have a carry uh, loss forward on your capital gains. I can use that as a tool to get funds out basically at a zero tax rate from the bucket number one. So there's a lot of things. And then we want to see how it all flows together. Right. What about your estate plan? So we got all this done. You say, oh, yeah, I have this big trust, and I look at your statement. And your statement has John Smith. It doesn't have John Smith trust. Mm. So I'm like, well, I can see that you did not change the title of your assets into your trust. So it's nice you paid a lot of money for this binder. Right. But what's in it? Right. Because you didn't finish it up. So all of these things you want your financial advisor to take a look at. And that's what I do. Because yeah. they all kind of go together. And like you said, the last thing we want, Jen, is a big financial mistake. Right. Okay. Right. So that's what I want to look at. So it sounds like it's a big deal <laughs> to talk to somebody who does help retirees yes. and focuses on this stage of life. So, the full plan. Right. The whole right. thing. Great question. The whole there. gambit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question from Tim in Hilton Head. Tim says, I inherited an IRA from my father a few months ago, but I have no idea what to do with it. So where do I start? Well, that's interesting so we need to know how old tim is so okay. we'll say tim how old are you that's one thing we want to know uh what is your risk tolerance tim you know um, do we need these funds uh now you have 10 years to do a withdrawal on these funds potentially it depends on maybe your dad's age or whatever but we have 10 years to deplete these so do we want to spread these taxes over 10 years you said ira i don't know if it's a roth ira okay. or if it was a traditional ira we still have to deplete them within 10 years, but they're taxed differently. So depending on the taxation would determine how we may want to do that. Uh, but also, if you're nearing retirement, Tim, in the early days, I've been doing this, as I mentioned, I think before, about 32 years. So in the early days, I didn't have too many clients that had IRAs. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it? <laughs> because they were old. Yeah. They didn't and they have didn't have IRAs right. back then. So, and these were you know, depression babies, you know, so they saved all their money and they're like, you know, I got millions of dollars. I'm afraid I'm going to outlive my money. I'm like, you don't spend a nickel. <laughs> so, yeah. But in this case, I don't know what Tim's situation is, what the, the, if it's a Roth or traditional, but we also need to test his tolerance for uh, market swings and things of that nature. Usually we want to apply that same thing, you know, that rule of 100 and say, mm -hmm. okay, well, we want to be too aggressive based upon your age and, and how we want to spend this and over, average it out over the next 10 years or whatever. So there's a few more things that we would need to get the pieces of the puzzle together and figure it out. All right. Really important insights there. Appreciate that, yeah. Phil. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your answers no today. And if you have a question, you can visit the website. We might just be able to use one of your questions on a future show. And don't hesitate to act on the information that you've heard today. It never hurts to call, even if it's for that second opinion. Don't wait. Call now. For Phil and the team at Revolutionary Financial Group, I am Jen Rizak. Have a great day and an even better retirement.